Hi everyone, Julie here. Uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, under Hedgehog Studio. Uh, Cheryl from Distressed FX invited me to share my workflow with you. So let's go ahead and get started. I work in Procreate, Brushstroke, Distressed FX, and Snapseed. Uh, so I use Procreate as my base uh, application that I bring everything into. Um, let's open the image I'm going to work with today and it is a uh, photograph I took on a uh, iPhone of a local barn. Uh, it's a typical California barn. I live about, I was I live about an hour and 20 minutes outside of San Francisco. I was born and raised there. And uh, I live on what's called the urban rural edge. And I am very fortunate to get to take photographs like this uh, of all sorts of wonderful landscapes as well. So um, basically I work in a square format. So I do uh, cropped all my images into um, a square. Uh, this particular image is a little bright for me. I like, generally I like overcast days the best, but you never know what you're going to have each day. And um, this is a little bright for me. So the first thing that I often do in an image is I will desaturate it slightly. And I desaturated this about 40% uh, and uh, I'm happy with that. I look at the picture and decide uh, what really is my focal point here, and the focal point for me is the barn. Uh, it disappears a little bit. Um, there's uh, a lot of nice texture in the front, but a lot of it is heavy tire marks and things that I really kind of want to cover up. So what I do is I uh, basically take a chalky type brush and uh, color on top in its own layer uh, above the image uh, with uh, this color and a brush. Um, the second thing is due to the fact that the, uh, the barn sort of gets lost among the trees, I need to brighten that up a bit. So what I often do is I paint over things. In this situation, I painted gray on top of this barn. Um, but using blending modes, it is amazing what you can do with various colors. And this actually works very well for me on uh, certain images. So I painted a dark gray and I'm going to put it through a blending mode. And the blending mode that I ended up using is called Divide. And if you notice, it really pops that image up. And um, you can see everything through it. You can see the slats in the wood, the slats from behind. And sometimes I will duplicate that image to even brighten it a little more. But uh, the second image that I add, I will decrease its opacity, generally by about 50%. So I'm real happy with that. At this particular point, I would save it and take it into the Brushstroke app. Brushstroke is filled with wonderful filters to give a painterly effect. So there are uh, oil effects, um, uh, all sorts of different selections you can choose from. Uh, in this situation, I used what was called the simple effect. And I actually used, just so you know, and it was S3. And um, it gives a uh, soft, soft feel to everything in the image. The only problem is that I can't reduce in the program enough of the effect. It's a little too strong for me. So I bring it into Procreate 
and I reduce the opacity by about 50% so that the image underneath shows through and now the effect is not so strong. So I'm going to save it at this particular point and share it to my camera roll. I save most things in Ping whenever I have an opportunity that I can do that and I have exported that and now we can leave procreate and I'm going to open that image I created in brushstroke in distressed FX now so I'm going to choose the picture from my camera roll and that is it that's the one I have lowered the opacity on and I'm going to run through the various textures to see how they look um, there are so many wonderful choices to choose from here and each one impacts the image differently and it impacts different images differently. It all has to do with lighting, all sorts of variabilities. But I can tell right now, I'm going to stay on this particular, uh, it's the original pack, um, under the SYN sin texture I really like and um, so what I'm going to do is lower the opacity a little bit and I'm happy with that so I am going to flatten this image and now it's permanently flattened with the original um, the next thing I do is I go through the gels and the various uh, um, gels that are in the upper layer and I'm going to switch the pack. Uh, two of my favorites are Beyond Skies and The Heavens and here I really experiment again um, and I play with the overlay modes um, and I really like the over and up. Um, it's uh, some clouds that I just happen to uh, really love them. Um, basically, I'm going to go into the uh, sliders, select the sliders, and I'm going to bring down that opacity of this one a little bit as well. Okay. And I'm happy with the look of that on top. The only thing is the bottom, it's somewhat darkened up and I want that fairly light. Um, so with the new Distressed FX, you have the option to mask. Mask out what you do or don't want. And so I'm going to go in and click on the masking tool and bring the size of the brush because I'm going to remove this whole lower foreground um, ma uh, mask it uh, and but I'm going to do it at 50% opacity and I mask with a circular motion because I find that's really it gives an even masking and everybody does this differently but this is my workflow and just thought I'd share that with you. Um, so I'm covering the area that I basically don't want that um, texture or gel over. Okay, if I let it go, now it's back to a much lighter color and I'm real happy with that. And I'm gonna check okay on that. And now I am going to flatten that. Next, I want to go and add some elements. You have a nice selection. You click on the little bird. You have a lot of birds. You have trees. You have a huge selection to choose from. I personally like By the Wire. So I am going to select, this could either be an electrical or a telephone wire. And, um, I am going to shrink that down by pinching my fingers together and I'm bringing it down to its smallest size because the barn is somewhat out there in uh, 
uh, on the horizon line. It's not terribly up close to us. And I am going to place it right about there. And I'm going to click OK by hitting the check mark. Now, normally you wouldn't have anything in front of the barn like this. So with the new masking tool, you can create the illusion that it is actually sitting behind the barn. So I'm going to bring down my brush size really small, but I'm going to bring up the opacity to maximum so I can mask out that entire pole that is showing in front of the barn. And I'm also going to mask out the wire that's showing in front of the barn. Okay, I'm happy with that. And so I'm going to check OK and I am going to flatten that. Now I want to add some birds. Um, there's a lot to choose from. I happen to like some of the original birds and what I am going to do is again if you notice how large they are to start with, uh, in a lot of situations, you may need them that large. But this is a little in the distance, and so I am going to pinch those birds down, and uh, I use as a gauge the, the tree, um, because if they were in the tree, sitting in the tree, these look like small blackbirds to me, um, that's about the size of what they would be. So I'm going to place them basically right around here. And I am going to hit OK. And I am going to flatten that as well. So I am happy with this. I might experiment more. But for time constraints, um, I wanted to show you basically my workflow. So I, since I'm happy with this, I'm going to move on and save this. To my camera roll and I am going to take that into Procreate. Okay, now I bring it back into Procreate. One reason is uh, sometimes it's a little more saturated than I like, and I have, I can compare and make a decision on what I want to do with it. Um, I'm going to desaturate this just a little bit. Um, so I am going to click on the saturation and bring it down uh, to about 45%. Okay, I'm happy with that now. And now I'm gonna go on to my final step. So I'm gonna share that to my camera roll. Close out of here. And what I would normally do is close out of here and take this into Snapseed. So I'm basically going to walk you through quickly what I would do in Snapseed. Um, so the first thing I would do in Snapseed is take it into its curves option. If you notice, I have increased the uh, color so it is more of a um, blue green and if you notice that is much more of a blue green at this particular point the next thing I would do is I basically will use the selective tool in Snapseed and punch up the barn. There is an option to brighten just specific areas. And in this situation, 
I selected the barn to brighten up a bit. Once again, it's to bring our attention to the barn. Um, the next step that I do in Snapseed is I add what is called a glow option. This is just one of the many tools that Snapseed has. So I use the glow option at a very low opacity at about 25%. Next thing that I do is I add a slight vignette and I also do that at about 25%. So you can see the slight vignette around the outer edge. So to basically see what I've done in Snapseed, let's just remove all of these things I did and look at that. I brightened it. I gave it a slight glow and then a slight vignette. So at this particular point, I've pretty much um, done everything that I want to do to this image, but sometimes I like to add stamps and things. And uh, there are a couple of things I really like to do, and that is I may add in an additional cloud. Uh, these are often stamps that I'll either make or sometimes I purchase them. Um, I might add in some grass. Um, one thing I often do is I add in some flex into the foreground. Um, one of the reasons why I think I do that is I was a decorative artist for a number of years, 25 years at least, and I used to do faux finishing and murals on walls. And uh, in a lot of my work, I would add little flecks. And uh, one of the ways that uh, you would do this was to, uh, with a semi-dry brush, literally fling some paint. And, or on, um, a panel I might have been working on. You take a toothbrush and flex some flex. So that's where that comes from, I think. Um, the other thing is I wanted to really quickly show you uh, another approach I might have taken with this, and that was uh, basically like to add a field into the image. Changes the look entirely. I had this thought, oh, I'd like it to be a poppy field, so I made a little brush um, that looks like a bunch of little poppies, and I sprinkled them all around. Then I took that into brush stroke and applied the oil filter to it, and it gives a real impressionistic type look to the image. Um, I might tone that down a bit uh, and lower the opacity so it's not quite so strong. Uh, like I've told you, I have a tendency to want filters to not overpower the image where I actually control it and uh, it looks a little bit better with it not being quite so strong. But I wanted you to see that there are all sorts of possibilities and things that you can do with your images. So um, thank you very much, Cheryl, for asking me to um, uh, show you my workflow. I appreciated it greatly. And um, hopefully uh, you uh, can take something away from this little process here and experiment and create um, on your own. And um, my uh, main thing is to just have a good time doing this. And you can't have a better time than playing with textures. So have a lot of fun, have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.